Thank you all for being here. And this is Carpe Diem Iterum, Seize the Day Again. <laughs> Let me start by sharing a personal insight. Um, I'm going to share with you many insights today, but first start with a personal insight. So my passion in work and life is to help people. Say it one more time. My passion in life and work is to help people. And toward the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you a little bit more insight to help you understand why that drives me. But all of us at InterSystems are passionate about client success. Our products and our people help our clients make impactful achievements in their organizations. In the next 30 minutes, I'm going to share with you 10 client success stories that I find fascinating, and I hope you do too. In addition, I'm going to give you some insights into how InterSystems thinks, some behind the scenes understanding of what drives our passion. And these 10 stories have two common themes. The first theme is a vision for urgent change, along with the passion and focus to get it done. And the second attribute, or the second theme, is they need data faster to make better decisions. So I'm really excited to go through these stories. Let's get started. This first story starts in Japan with a customer called Paltech. And Paltech is an interesting company. They are the number one wholesaler uh, for sundry goods in all of Japan. Let me describe that in a little bit more detail. What I mean by sundry goods are things you find in a corner store, you know, over-the-counter medications, cosmetics, toiletries, things like that. As you might imagine, in Japan, these stores are very compact. So on a shelf, you might have three tubes of toothpaste, and if I buy one, you want that replaced as soon as possible. You don't want to be out of stock. So the logistics and supply chain issues in Japan have really, really high standards. The CEO for Paltech, uh, a fellow named Mr. Maeda-san, has vision, passion, and focus. And during COVID, like many of the supply chain customers here, they faced unique challenges. And they have a, um, a vision of continuous improvement. So along with COVID, they always want to do a better job. So what they did is they embarked on this, on this uh, project with their IT organization. Mr. Maeda has his own IT organization that develops 70% of the internal systems that, that supports their business. So this team is a tiger team that can get things done quickly. They worked with our sales engineers, and in five months, they developed something that they call PIT, P-I-T. And they deployed PIT, and it had a major impact on their business. It's used by 800 of their salespeople and 240 of their store support staff. And what it does is it's a data fabric that unifies everything in the supply chain. So they can see supply chain disruptions, they can see travel disruptions, delivery disruptions, et cetera. It gave them a lot of insight. And along with this, they did other innovations too. For example, they had a shortage on delivery drivers. So they created their own Uber-like system where they can call up drivers on demand to deliver product to stores. Kind of interesting. They have achieved 99.999% on-time and full delivery. So I think all of us are in IT. Achieving five nines is pretty remarkable. So that's a good story to start with. And let me give you some insight into inner systems. Our CEO has a passion for excellence in everything we do. Our products have to run faster and scale higher. They have to be secure and reliable. Our people and our services have to be very responsive, and we have to genuinely help. And we respect everybody, especially each other, and we have very high standards for respect. When I joined the company, we had less than 20 people. So we may not have spent time to talk about these things, but we did them. These principles were true then, and they are absolutely true now. 
In this net, next set of client success stories, I'm going to talk about four global investment banks. And these stories are very interesting. But global investment banks are reticent to share some of the challenges they have and how they overcame them. You know, it's competitive information in a way, so it's understandable. Story number one has a challenge. The challenge is they can't get data as fast as they need to. In order to get reports, they call upon the IT organization, and that takes 10 days to 14 days on average to turn around a report. By the time they get it, the data is two weeks old. So they're not making decisions as much as good as they would like. So they need data faster. They're also paying $30 million a year in regulatory fines. So that's not good. And they had no ability to drill into their own data. So what they did is they used InterSystems Iris to create a data fabric across the entire organization. So they could, they could see across trades, equity, treasury, financial positions. They could see all of that. And they're able to make decisions on current data, not stale data. And more importantly, the business users were able to drill into data and run whatever analytics they wanted to. And they could create reports without waiting on IT. And they could automate those reports to run as part of their business. As a result, they're not paying any regulatory fines. So as we go through these, I'm going to share some quotes from these customers. Um, and they're interesting. The second financial services client had invested a lot of money in building a large data lake, a petabyte data lake. And that's great, but they found out they couldn't achieve all the things they wanted to. The data came into the data lake in batch, so it wasn't transactional data. They couldn't drill down into the data. They had problems running SQL joins, so they really couldn't do the analytics they wanted. And it really didn't scale up either. So in this story, we helped them be successful by putting InterSystems Iris in front of Hadoop. So all the data flowing into Hadoop first went through Iris and then onto Hadoop. And they shifted the workloads, all the queries, onto InterSystems Iris. As a result, they were able to work on real-time data. Um, they're getting data continuously at 50 megabytes a second. They could support all the analytics needs. They can run SQL queries and actually store the results easily. Right now, they have about 300 terabyte of that data. And they have an SLA on these queries. The SLA is the queries have to respond with data within 100 milliseconds. Think about that. That's pretty demanding. In Hadoop, it was taking seconds or minutes. So they weren't hitting their SLA at all. With InterSystems Iris, so hitting the, their SLA of 100 milliseconds or less consistently with over 100 connections. The third story is about data being choked. They had a system that was operating quite fine until they had billions and billions of cross-asset transactions coming through. And that's where the system started falling over. They needed 50% more performance in order to do their job. And when this system went down because it was overloaded, it would cost them $100,000 a minute. Think about that impact. By switching this system to Inert Systems Iris, they got three to five times better throughput, 10 times faster data ingestion. They reduced their operating costs by 75%, and that in itself saves them $6 million a year. And they've had no downtime and no performance issues. And so far, that saved them an additional million dollars. And the number of transactions continues to go up. So it was 50,000 is now 85,000. And the system's performing really well. This final financial services story is about meeting end-of-day deadlines. 
So this customer just couldn't get the regulatory reports, the commercial reports, uh, the financial reports. They couldn't get it done at the end of the day. They needed better performance, and they needed to eliminate all the ongoing regulatory fines and client payments that they were paying. I don't know how much the fines were, but these numbers are usually pretty big. By replacing the system with InterSystems Iris, they not only got better performance, they got 117 times better performance. 117 times better. And it used 6% of the CPU and 80% of memory compared to the system that we replaced. It's pretty amazing. They're meeting their end of day processing requirements consistently and they're paying no fines whatsoever. I have some additional stories in supply chain. And these are pretty interesting too. And in supply chain, I'm happy to identify the customers. The first one we'll identify is Mediterranean Shipping Company. So this is an organization, you probably have seen their containers. They have 21 million containers all over the place. They have 300,000 movements of those containers every single day from ports to rail to ships. Um, they have 10 billion data elements that come into the system. And what they wanted to do is have a better understanding of what's happening in terms of logistics, disruptions and deliveries, how they could achieve better SLAs. And they use InterSystems Iris to do that. They have now real-time on-demand location, status, and they're aware of any disruptions in the process. They've used machine learning to optimize the shipping routes and to improve their delivery SLAs. And the interesting thing about this story is they reduce the number of empty containers being shipped because when you ship an empty container, nobody's paying you for that, so it eats right into your profitability. So InterSystems Iris and our team that helped them have made a big impact. You've, I'm sure you've heard of SPAR. This is a 41 billion euro uh, retail chain. And what they wanted to do is more of a digital transformation. What they had in vision was to connect, look at the workflows and the processes between their ERP system and point of sale systems. And they wanted to optimize that. They wanted to optimize that like Paltech, you know, for improving uh, availability of things on the shelf, replenishment. They also wanted to uh, streamline campaigns. So they do 800 promotions per week times 1,500 stores. If you think about that, it's 1.2 million unique promotions per week. And they're able to achieve that using Iris because they also have a data fabric that's connected to everything throughout their entire business. CFAO is known for uh, products, uh, services, logistics. So in the logistics piece, they have an excellent reputation. What happens is a lot of other companies want to leverage the great logistics that CFAO offers. So they call them partners. And the challenge that CFAO has is it takes a long time to bring a partner on board because they have to touch so many different systems throughout their business. So using InterSystems Iris, they're able to interoperate across 120 subsidiaries in 40 countries. And as a result, they can onboard a customer, a partner, 65 times faster. So these are real client success stories. The final one is Blisco. And Blisco is a Dutch company uh, that manufactures textiles and fashions. And their website, I think, is pretty cool, by the way, if you want to check out their website. And what they wanted to do was to improve manufacturing quality. A 1% improvement in manufacturing quality yields 50,000 euros. So it's worth doing. So what they used InterSystems Iris for is to build predictive models. So they built predictive models for maintenance. They could predict when a machine would fail so they could service it in advance. They would get real-time alerts if something went wrong with the machine 
or anything in their production. And the third thing they did was interesting. They built a predictive model for the quality of new products they're making so they understand the quality before the new product even reaches the market. And that's pretty interesting. You think about this, and their, their tagline for this initiative was do it right the first time. That saved them a lot of money. So I want to talk a little bit more about our DNA. You know, all these stories, they share cause and conviction in the ability to be successful. In each of these stories, it's our products and our people that help drive the success. This is a saying that, it's a line from uh, Terry, our CEO, and we use this with people in the company. Because inevitably, you find yourself in a difficult position, and you may, may not be sure what to do. And this is a guiding principle. If you're not sure what to do, always do what's in the best interest of the customer, and you'll never get in trouble for it. You know, being privately held frees us up to focus on just two things, our products and you. And if we do both of those things well, then we as a company will succeed. But it starts with our people. And hiring is not easy at InterSystems. We have some of the recruiters here can, that can attest to it. Um, if we want to hire one person, we need 100 applicants. Why? Because only 23% of those applicants will pass our tests. And after that, only 8 to 10% of the 23% will get hired. So if I'm lucky, I can hire two people out of 100. If I want to hire 200 people, I need 20,000 applicants. So our standards for hiring are really high. When we look at hiring, we want to make sure we hire people with all the elements that make up our DNA. Let me go through them with you. What I look for when I'm interviewing a candidate are five factors. And I want to see really compelling evidence that they excel in all five of these factors. The first one is aptitude. I want to hire really smart people. Smart people can learn and adapt and change as the business and the markets around us change. The second thing I look for is a really high degree of initiative. And the emphasis here is on action. Nobody here wants to hire people that sit around and wait to be told what to do. We all want people with a high degree of initiative. The third thing is passion. And passion can mean different things to everybody in this room. To me, it means somebody who has energy, who's excited, who's alive. Passionate people can drive change. And I don't care if they're passionate about a church, a club, a sport, a movement. I want people that can drive change. The fourth element, which is really essential, is professionalism. And by that definition, I mean, if I put Mike Fuller in front of a customer, sorry to pick on you, Mike, <laughs> would I be confident that Mike, in his heart, would really want to help that customer? And I know he would. And then is he wise enough to understand what the customer needs, which is sometimes different than what they want? A little trick there. The fifth thing I look for is humility. And if we hire people with those elements, then we can perpetuate the culture of the company that we've developed for so long. And we can perpetuate our passion for customer success. This next story is one of my favorites. This is a customer in Indonesia. They've been a track care customer using our EMR for a long time. In fact, they, have three, they had three instances of track care because we implemented it in stages. So they have a reputation as a privately held hospital group for excellence in patient care. In fact, they have a 90% approval rating for, from patients. In healthcare, I think that's pretty high. But they have this continuous improvement plan, and Dr. Yanwa, the CEO, and his team were thinking about how can, we, how can they drive improvement even further. So they came up with a program, 
which they call Digital Transformation 2024, to drive improvement in the business. And the real specific goal of this is to have 95% of all healthcare data inside of the medical record system, inside of TrackCare. So that's pretty ambitious because there are lots of systems in healthcare, as our healthcare customers know. So it's medical equipment, it's lab, it's pharmacy, it's radiology, it's all kinds of different systems that need to coordinate and bring data together in order to drive better clinical decisions. At the end of the day, if you can improve clinical decisions in the business, you're improving healthcare. So the challenge was the features they need are in our latest release. And they're deployed in three instances on a 2011 release. So our team in Thailand came together with Dr. Yanwa's team, and in six months, they had the systems, the three systems unified into one, and they upgraded to the current release. So that was a fantastic effort where we were shoulder to shoulder with the customer, on site and remote, during a pandemic, to get this done. They went live last October, and they were very happy. But how do you measure the success of a digital transformation? In their case, they chose to go for him stage seven. So let me take a minute and describe this, because you know, you know, the healthcare people here will understand what HIMSS is, but others may not. HIMSS is essentially a health informatics society, excuse me. And they have a seven stage assessment model for the use of electronic medical record systems. So if you're taking full advantage of your electronic medical record system, you're gonna to get to higher stages. Pondok Inha wanted to achieve stage six. So they set out to do that. Stage, any of these stages, by the way, are not trivial to achieve. So going for stage six is really aspirational. And it made us pause and think, can they really do it? Well, they did. So they went live last October with the upgrade this past April. They were notified by HIMSS that they achieved stage six. The CEO was so happy, he sent a text, this is the actual text, to some of our staff in Thailand. And he was just ecstatic that they were able to achieve it. And now they're working on stage seven. They're not sitting on their laurels. But wait, this story gets even better. This is unbelievable. So the director for Asia Pacific at HIMSS had a meeting with the Ministry of Health in Indonesia. And he told us about this meeting. And in this meeting, the ministry was so impressed and inspired by what Pondok Inha could achieve, they set their sights on having all public hospitals in Indonesia also aim to achieve stage six. Indonesia is the fourth largest population in the world. It's over 220 million, I believe. So not only did Dr. Yanwa have an impact on his organization in improving care for the patients they serve, he had an impact on a nation. A little bit more about InterSystems DNA. This picture uh, is with some of our international support team who was in town and they were interested in kind of the beginnings of the company and they had a lot of questions. And I said, let's walk over to the building we were in back in the 1980s. So this is in the north end of Boston, for those who know Boston. This used to be an olive oil warehouse. We didn't start out as an olive oil company, by the way. Um, and it was converted to office space and we gradually filled it up and then we had a, we had a move in 1988. One thing I remember about this office is walking through the neighborhood and smelling Italian food. I love working there. So I must say, I'm proud of every InterSystems employee because they do amazing work every day to help our clients. And speaking of helpful, let me go back to the beginning. I talked about my passion in work and life is to help people. It wasn't always that way. So when I was in college, you know, around that time, I loved math, I loved physics, 
and I liked anything that goes really, really, really fast. In fact, I wanted to be an Air Force pilot, but I have a lazy eye muscle, yeah, so that didn't work out. So I went down a different path. I went into electrical engineering because I can apply math and physics, and chip design was big in those days. I'm really dating myself. <laughs> and I liked assembly programming. Don't throw tomatoes. Um, and I like system software. You know, so I, I went down that path, and that was interesting. Around that time, there was a tragedy that hit my family. My teenage uh, sister had passed away. And you know, it was just awful. I, ha I had to step up. I really had to step up and take care of things for my family and for people around me. And that's when I had an epiphany. There's nothing more valuable in life. There's nothing more rewarding in life than helping people. That's where it came from. So my message to you is, please, let us help you reach your goals and your ambitions for your organization. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your trust. And thank you for being here.